Hello everybody, my name is Jack Caravanos and I'll be your instructor for Global Environmental Health this semester. It's an unusual semester, but we're going to get through it just fine. Let me go over some details so I don't have to waste time during lesson number one. Uh, first of all, this is what I want to cover today. I'll go over all these topics and of course if you have questions, you'll see me in class one way or another or of course you could email me or the course assistant. All right, let's dive into this. So first of all, uh, the course is well polished. It's been going on for years. I've been teaching it for many, many years. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Even though it's a required course, and I know you're being forced to take it, I think you're going to like it. Uh, so we'll see. This is who I am. Um, I am. I do a lot of global work. Uh, I, will, I used to travel many times uh, during the course of a semester. But of course, I've been stuck in, in town with COVID. Uh, epidemic as many of you have been. Anyway, um, this is my passion is of course uh, motorcycling and this is a great picture only because I was doing two things I love which is taking measurements of uh, contamination and also motorcycling. So this happens to be in Peru in uh, Madre de Dios and this is in my left hand is a um, Jerome vapor analyzer for mercury and in my right hand is a XRF, which measures mercury and lead in soil. So these two instruments, together with some other um, uh, testing we do, we assess whether communities are being contaminated and the health effects. Anyway, uh, the box on the right sort of goes over some of the places I've been at and, um, and uh, some of my experience will come out during the course of the uh, uh, semester. Anyway, we do have a course assistant. Her name is Samaya. She's very good, very attentive. There's her email. Uh, you can contact her anytime and speak privately with her. She's, uh, she will maintain confidentiality if uh, you want to talk to her about something that you can't talk to me about. Okay, so this is the course webpage. Uh, you probably have been here already. I activated it uh, not too long ago. There's a lot there, so let's go over some details. On the left there's this navigation pane. Uh, there's more items listed on this than what you have on yours because this is the instructor view. But all your lessons, all your assignments, all your grade books will all be accessed on the left. Uh, we of course have uh, the syllabus. That's the first thing you need to do is download the syllabus and be familiar with the course. Uh, it's rather comprehensive but I've sort of summarized it in other parts of the course also. Uh, this is one of the uh, most favorite features, a week-by-week a -week listing of the course content. So what you see there is 12 topics. Uh, it's cut off at the bottom, don't worry about it. And this semester, because we have a maximum of 20 students per class, that means uh, there's going to be Group A, which will meet on one day, and then the following week, Group B will meet. Uh, I will record lessons. So you could either see it if you're not in class that week, for example, people with the last name uh, starting with Z are not going to be there on whatever, September 3rd. Uh, you will either log in and see it live or you just play the recording whenever you get a chance. So that's how it's going to work. I'll send you more details on that later. There's an announcements page in case you are worried uh, uh, if you've missed something, uh, I would check this announcements page. You'll get an email about it as well as it's stored here. So if I say something in announcements and you say I never got it, uh, that doesn't really fly because everything is stored up there in that uh, folder. So please do respond or just stay on top of the announcements. I don't waste your time. Uh, there's a calendar. What you don't see on this calendar because the course hasn't started is the assignment due dates are hyperlinked. So if you see any hyperlinks on this calendar, click on it to make sure you know that there's an assignment due that date. Uh, the calendar is really a good feature of NYU classes. Then we have messages. Sometimes I'll send you a message or you send me a message. This is where it appears. And there's forums. Now the forums are divided in three parts. There's a general discussion forum if we want to talk about something big that may have happened. There's also an introduce yourself forum. So what I would like you to do maybe right after this um, uh, viewing is go online, click on the uh, forum, introduce yourself and write something about yourself or 
take your iPhone and just give me a quick bio, uh, face to face, or an audio file. Uh, frankly, I'd rather see you talking into an iPhone so I could get a connection with the name and the face. Also, there's another form that lists all the issues with questions on exams and assignments and all that stuff. So if you if you are looking for an answer to something, this is a good place to go because um, uh, chances are other students are curious about it. So if you have a question about an assignment, you won't be alone. And I may have answered it already, and it's right there. Um, the background of the course is topical, meaning every week we're on a different topic. We can't cover everything, so you notice there's no uh, there's no lesson on glo on ocean uh, contamination, on uh, various atmospheric issues. But this is a typical environmental health course, and almost all health departments are practically organized this way. Uh, there's a department of food and water and sanitation, on and on. Um, so uh, we have these 12 topics we'll go over, plus three exams, 12 plus three is 15 weeks, plus some assignments and some required readings. So uh, let's go into this a little bit deeper. Um, there are, as you see, a green and purple. Those are the alternating weeks of uh, group A and group B. Every four lessons we have an exam, uh, and there are three exams. Uh, that are launched. We have, of course, Thanksgiving break, and there's some assignments, and there are quizzes, and there are uh, other bigger assignments. So um, uh, I have gotten complaints that, gee, there's a lot of work in this course, but it's fun stuff. I think you'll like it, and have, and actually, I have deleted a lot of assignments. But usually, there's one or two assignments a week, that, like homework assignments, looking something up on the web. And then there's a couple of bigger projects during the semester. Uh, the biggest project is the environmental data graphing project. Uh, and that's what uh, alternatively known as the YouTube project because of how it worked with. I'll talk about that more in a second. But we also have a project about working with interprofessionals. Uh, can you work with other people in a discipline? So that's called the interprofessional assignment. And there's also a systems thinking assignment. And the way these all pan out is assignments uh, take 12% of the class uh, score is your assignment, or the, oh, I'm sorry, the weekly assignments, and let's say 12 lessons, 12 assignments, and they get scored on a, a scale of 0 to 10. So most people do very well. Just you know, do the assignment, you'll do fine. Uh, then we have the environmental data graphing project. I should really call that a project because it's 18% of your grade. It's a big chunk of your grade. Exams are 20% each, so there's three exams at 60%. Then the interprofessional is 6% or so, and the systems thinking is a modest 3.5%. So as far as putting in your effort, it's pretty much the exams and the graphing assignment. Okay? Um, so here's what the schedule looks like. I'll let you peruse this. It's also on the website. There's not much more to do there. Except that, notice uh, November 12th, the environmental data assignment is due. So we have an exam on November 5th, and then the data project is on uh, November 12th, because I need time to grade these. You know, you guys put a lot of effort into it, and I put a lot of effort grading it. Uh, but we'll talk more about that in class. Okay, that's your first exam. So uh, all exams are online. I usually open them for a few days, uh, so you have plenty of time to take it. But it is a timed exam. So even though it's open book, it's a timed exam. So you only have like an hour and 20 minutes to do the exam. Again, we'll talk about it more, but your first exam as a group, groups A and B, will be October 1st. Uh, as far as the lessons, the week-to-week -week lessons, here's a screenshot of what, you're prob what you'll likely see. So for every lesson, there'll be a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I launch that PowerPoint presentation and talk uh, over it, and I record it. I don't record my face, just my voice and the, um, and the PowerPoint. And then I publish it. So you see under the first hyperlink, there's one called Recording of the Intro Lesson. 
and that's an MP4 that's available all semester long. So if you missed something, or you're not sure you heard something, or you came to class late, or you didn't come to class, this is where you'll get it. Um, every lesson will have some readings. Uh, most of these are perusing websites of sorts, and uh, some lessons will have assignments. Uh, in this one you see lesson number one, there's an assignment. Anyway, you'll look for this lesson uh, when I activate it. Um, so, graphing assignment. Where is my topic? And the answer is your topic has been entered into a field in your gradebook. So go into NYU classes, click on um, your gradebook, and you should see something like this. Of course, I don't have grades. Um, but down on the left, you'll see there's the environmental data graphing assignment, YouTube, YT. Uh, and under that, there's something called topic. There should be a pull down menu, click on it, and a comment appears, and your topic is there. So I really, really urge you, please, before the first class, maybe even, uh, pull up your topic and write it down on a piece of paper. You're probably confused about it, but we'll talk about that later on. Uh, essentially, what you're going to get is the name of a historic place of environmental consequence. Uh, it could be a pollution event, a disastrous event, it could be Bhopal. You know some of these, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, Fukushima. Uh, and basically, all 40 of you have different topics. Uh, so this one here, Times Beach, Missouri, is about uh, something that happened in this town that drastically impacted public health. Uh, you probably never heard about it because it's pretty old. Uh, however, it is, uh, it's your job to tell me the story of what happened there using graphs. Okay. Anyway, read the assignment well in the syllabus and you'll, you'll get with it. Um, so that's the topics, the goals of the project, and the general form. By the way, it's a very specific, detailed write-up of this uh, project either a narrated PowerPoint that's then converted into a video and uploaded to YouTube, okay? And this is due by the 12th. Anyway, I have examples of what to expect or what you should be looking to do uh, on the assignment tab, which is already activated. So you, have, you could actually go there right after this video. The interprofessional is about uh, can you work uh, on a public health problem with other people outside public health. And when I say outside public health, I mean I don't want you to speak with a physician, a clinician, a dental hygienist, a nurse, a community health officer. I know what they're going to say. You know what they're going to say about fixing this problem. I want you to speak to a banker, a real estate, a lawyer, a politician, a police officer, whatever uh, discipline you want. So the key here is going to learn about a topic, present, with, present uh, uh, to these three individuals independently what that topic it is and what's the public health dilemma. And you say, hey, how would you fix this using your skills as an architect? Okay? Anyway, I'll read up on it and we'll uh, get back to this sometime during the semester. Then there's a systems thinking assignment. Uh, this word pops up in public health all the time. Um, you could read some of this narrative here. Just pause the video and read on your own. But essentially, a systems thinking uh, assignment uh, forces you, much in the way of, of interprofessional, to think outside of the box. And for example, look at some of these absurd statements. The solution to obesity is becoming a vegetarian. Well, there's of course some truth to that, but it truly is absurd. That's not how we're going to fix obesity. It's a very complicated public health issue, and there's no one solution, and if you do one thing, your chances are you're going to be uh, feedbacking into another adverse effect. So all of these seem very simple solutions, but you know very well that they're not, and when you start mapping this out, where if I do this, this happens, and then when this happens, this happens, and how all this fits in, you'll come up with something called a systems map. Anyway, a lot of good YouTubes on this, so go ahead and knock yourself out and learn more about systems thinking. It's only 3.5% of your grade, 
but it is a public health competency that I'm required to evaluate you on. Okay, uh, some of the required books. Uh, I finally finished an edition of uh, this historic book. Anne and I updated it. It just came out the, the week of COVID. So, um, but it is very comprehensive. It's very readable. I'm really uh, proud that uh, Anne uh, trusted me with some of these edits. And I think you'll really like it. Uh, it's available online. Some people are going for the seventh edition, which is probably a little cheaper. I'd rather you not, but I can't stop you. Um, there's significant overlap, so you'll be okay. The other book I want you to read, and you could start this right away, is A Civil Action. It's a great read. You're going to have to trust me on this. Everybody loves this book, and they do, uh, it, they do a great job. Uh, the author does a great job writing this story up. Not only is it a great story about a contamination, it's an epidemiological story, it's a biostatistic story, it's an ethical story, it's a love story, it's a murder mystery. Wow. And it's true. That's the phenomenal thing, that this is a true story. Anyway, uh, please uh, buy it and read it. I think you'll enjoy it. Do not see the movie, though. Uh, I love uh, John Travolta as much as you do. But this book, this movie has nothing to do with the book and really does an injustice to the whole topic. So I haven't even seen the movie, but it's basically just dealing with the two lawyers fighting each other as opposed to the entire public health issue. Uh, since we're on movies, I strongly recommend in your COVID uh, lockdown, you should see Erin Brockovich, a great story. And who doesn't love Julia Roberts, right? Uh, uh, Norma Ray, these are mostly true stories. Norma Ray is about a union official uh, organizing uh, the cotton mills of the South. And there's a lot of disease down there called bisonosis, cotton dust disease. So it's a good story, some good visuals and history about occupational health. This movie is little known, but I love uh, Ron Howard. Um, he's an actor in this movie. He didn't direct it. And it's modeled after a true story of what happened in Michigan with a cross-contamination of a, a flame retardant with grain. And then what happened to the cows and to the people. In short, if you grew up in Michigan in the 70s, you were told not to breastfeed. That's how serious this poisoning was. Uh, the movie's pretty good. Um, China Syndrome is amazing because this movie came out right before the Three Mile Island disaster in Pennsylvania. Uh, and it's got some cool actors. It's, of course, dated and you're going to have to you know, fight your way through some of the... Uh, uh, issues in that movie. But anyway, it's a, it's a fun movie with Jane Fonda and a couple of classic actors. China Syndrome. All these have an environmental theme of sorts. Soylent Green, a doomsday movie. Uh, I don't want to talk more about it. It's really corny. It's sexist. It's got some bad portrayal of people. However, back then it was all about, um, it was all about uh, the end of the world. Uh, and how the what happens at the end of the world. Anyway, it's a it's a fun uh, classic flick if you could tolerate you know the datedness of it. Uh, Contagion. I hope you saw this. It's hard to believe a public health student has not seen this. It is painful, I know. Uh, however, I do think you should all see this. Some great actors, some great acting, uh, and it's really interesting to compare this to what's happening in COVID. So there you go. What can I say? I love Breaking Bad. I'm a chemist at heart. And this has some great scenery and stories and good PPE. Mostly good PPE. Not always correct. Personal protective equipment. Uh, Chernobyl recently came out, I think about a year ago. Uh, I liked it. I've been to Chernobyl several times. Um, and it's pretty realistic. I, of course, I wasn't there when the accident happened. Uh, but there are some exaggerations here. Anyway, uh, there's no other good movie on Chernobyl. So if you're looking to learn about it, this is pretty good. And last but not least, uh, it's a disaster. I don't know how many of you have seen this. I recently saw it. Again, I'm in COVID lockdown like everybody else. And it's a really cute, funny uh, story. And it, there is an environmental theme to it. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. But by the way, you don't have to watch all these tonight. You could pace yourself during the semester. And there's a list of the, all of them. Uh, I don't want to say these are Caravanos' best, but they, they come pretty close to it. 
Uh, all right. So I believe that's it. Uh, oh, yes, I am on social media. There are my portals. I don't think you need to do anything with the first four. However, you may want to subscribe to my channel uh, because I have a lot of videos on there. And when I put something up, you'll be notified and it's sort of easier to navigate. Uh, I do have a channel, too, with Inside Edition and a couple other things that I do. Okay, I believe that's it. Yes, it is. Um, it's going to be a great semester. I promise you I'm going to give my 100% to make this as normal as, as it possibly can. And I will see you either week one or week two, depending on your last name. Okay, everybody. Adios. Goodbye.